Hey everybody, welcome back. So we're gonna do a little bit of work on Big Red tonight, the new channel beater truck. So I bought Big Red with an airbag light on and the boss man says, oh, we'll make that right for you. So I diagnosed it as a, um, a faulty driver's seatbelt buckle because there's a pretensioner unit in there when the airbags deploy, a little charge behind a piston that goes poof like that and it actually like cinches that buckle a couple inches tighter so that it just, it keeps you down in the seat harder. and that's out of spec. So we got, should be the new pretensioner came in just the other day. Yep, there's the piston right there on that end with the charge inside of it. You see the cable goes up to the buckle so that when that piston in there shoots forward, it just cinches that buckle down tight. So this is what we should need to get that airbag light off. So instructions, I've done this enough times. I probably know those by memory. So in order to get at this, we need to pull the driver's seat right out because there's a bolt and everything on the side you can't get at with a center console in a way, or the middle seat, I should say. And the middle seat doesn't come out until the ones on either side of it come out first. Anyway, so we gotta pull the driver's seat. Now, I mentioned how I don't like this tan interior as much as the gray and old blue. And, you know, you got this, driver's seat belt that doesn't like to retract you got to kind of feed it in if it's gonna it just doesn't go back on its own you know I'm a little bit touched and things like that bother me we've got a seat pivot bushing down here that that thing flops around is awfully loose and then when I'm sitting in it I hit a bump it's like ear ear and I just can't abide things like that and I'm pretty easy on interiors old blues interior is so much better let's just cut to the chase boys by the time you pull that driver's seat out and put that pretensioner new buckle and everything in, you're like nine-fifths of the way there to just swap in the whole interior. It's got to at least be that much. I'm no math whiz, but I'm pretty sure it's at least that much. So let's just swap interiors. Be done with it. So step number one, open all the doors. Give yourself full accessibility. These interiors come apart pretty quickly on these trucks, but still make it easy for yourself. Take out all the loose pieces, like these floor mats. You see all of that white hair on there? They still smell like the prior owner's dog. Kind of annoys me a little bit. But you also want to remove this hold down bolt and all the jack tools from the floor in the back since we're pulling the carpet up too. Next, remove the driver's seat. So we have this bolt at the front, that bolt at the front. They are both a T55 Torx, this being an Arizona truck, these should turn right out. I'm not worried about them sticking in the floor pan at all. Not even rusty, not even fair. Next, move the seat all the way ahead. We will have a bolt at the back here. We have this cover right here. There's a nut beneath that because that corner's on a stud. Now, you gotta pry this protective plastic cap off and one thing that's always gonna happen, this friction nut is always gonna come out of the back side of this cap. So they're just kind of melted in there. I don't know if we can see, you can kind of see where it was melted in and you'll never get these to stick again. You gotta get a new one, or if you can get creative and try and melt that friction nut back in there, I don't ever mess with it because this is inside. And even in Minnesota, these don't rust anyway. So you'll have that 18 millimeter right there. That's the same T55 Torx. We'll take our trim removal tool, little push pin at the top of the side plastic cover. Disengage that gracefully like I just did. Another T55 Torx bolt right there. With those three out, you should be able to remove the seat. Okay, so with all the bolts out, we'll tip the seat up. And we have two connectors down here, yellow one and gray one. Disconnect those. And the seat lifts out. And repeat all the same steps for the passenger side. And the seat comes out too. Center seat is up next, so the front anchor point on this side was underneath one of the seat bolts, which we already took out. Same for the front anchor point on the other side. So this rear anchor point is yet another T55 Torx head bolt. 
And to finish up, another 18 millimeter nut on this other back corner since it's on the stud. Be mindful of the seat belt anchor that goes over that. We have this center seat ready to pull. A penny and an old brake controller. Okay, what do we got here? Some Tums, all right. No wonder this thing smells like a dog, huh? Okay, with the back seat folded down, it is next to come out. First, you need to take the seat back off, and it just kind of hooks to the back of the cab. If you've done this before, just the right kind of push in and pull up. Should disengage it, yep, just like that. And this is where we check to see I've seen things stashed in these back back here before while taking um, cabs off of frames to work on diesel engines, considering that the uh, bolt back cab bolts are right there and same spot on the other corner. This one is clear, no contraband. So working our way across the back, 18 millimeter nut on that corner. T55 head Torx bolt holds both of those belt buckle anchors to the floor. Another T55 Torx head bolt holds the other belt buckle and lap belt to the floor. And one last 18 millimeter nut over in that corner. Now with the back seat sections flipped up, working across from the driver's side, we have 55 Torx, 55 Torx, and 55 Torx. This back seat section is ready to lift out. Now, I'm also going to pull the carpet out because, you know, dog hair, that's why this thing smells like the prior owner's dog, we'll take our trim removal tool. And first thing I need to do is pop up these scuff plates on both sides. You can tell this is an Arizona truck. That one looks like it got a little bit deformed, a little melted along that edge. But yeah, they just snap in. See all those clips on the back side? And as long as we're in the neighborhood, this front kick panel. So we have one push pin there pops out. This will disengage from the A-pillar. Same sequence on the passenger side. Now we go up in the middle here, we have this RCM cover. That stands for Restraints Control Module. It's the airbag module. You can see it under there. That just a couple snaps comes right off. And on each side where this rear seat pillar is, we have this little plastic piece. There's a push pin there and a push pin on the other side. They have to pull out. Keep track of those. That piece comes off. Do the same for the other side. Now, final step on each side, we have a little plastic uh, scrivet. It's a screw and a rivet. I usually just dig those screw heads out, so we'll take the one off of this corner. And finally, the one off of this corner. Now, we're ready to pull carpet. Make sure we get those under seat harnesses pulled back through. And 
and there we are seats carpeting flooring all out of the red truck so now all we have to do are all those same steps to old blue okay so it's sometime later yeah we got truck parts all over the place so you know old blue minnesota truck nasty rusty that's why we're replacing it but take a look on the inside here we got it done and there was a little bit more work involved with this truck because you know of the rust factor a lot of those seat bolts were stuck in the floor pan so you can see like the rust and stuff it took a lot more working to get all those seats and everything out of this you can even see back here this corner is getting awful brown we're getting a hole starting back there that's why we're replacing it with big red but yeah everything's out of old blue everything's out of big red let's start putting all the gray stuff in here shall we And we're just reverse order of disassembly, so plastic scrivets going in. Rear seat pedestal trim. Kick panel scuff plates. scuff plate trim next. Up at the front now, RCM cover. back seat. Now, I didn't think you needed to watch me tighten all the bolts, so we got the three across the front all tight. Of course, you have 18 millimeter nut there. You have this bolt that holds the center lap belt and buckle, and this bolt back here holds the other two buckles, and final 18 millimeter nut back here in the corner. So we can hang the seat back now. Make sure we pull the safety belts out from each side so they don't get pinched behind it. Engage the hooks on the top first. And cinch down. That's it for the back seat. Center seat next. Followed by passenger seat. So 18 millimeter nut tight, Torx bolt tight, Torx bolt tight. We have the pretensioner connector hooked up. And then the front two bolts tight, we can finish off this seat with the trim cover that goes over the side bracket here.
Okay, everybody, we're down to just the driver's seat left to go back in, which brings us back to the reason why we're here to begin with, the faulty pre-tensioner that was on the driver's seat that is original to Big Red, because Big Red is replacing Old Blue, but I like Old Blue's gray interior better, and Old Blue's seats are not as worn as the tan ones that came out of Big Red. Well, we have to replace this faulty pretensioner because I can't sell Old Blue after I put the tan seat back into it with an airbag light on. And this is the seat I'm going to keep, although this pretensioner is good. So we're going to take this pretensioner, replace the bad one with it, take the new pretensioner, put on the gray seat. You follow? Good. So let's start out by getting this faulty pretensioner off of this tan seat, shall we? So we start out by disengaging the two electrical connectors from the bottom of the seat pan. There we go. Now this 15 millimeter nut holds the pretensioner to the seat frame. And it has this little guide pin that keeps it from rocking. So we can lift that off the stud, snake both the electrical connectors out between the frame and the cushion. There's our bad pretensioner. So we performed all the same steps to the pretensioner on the gray seat. This is our good used. So we'll install it onto the tan seat. Just need to route both connectors down between the cushion and the seat frame. Start that on the stud. Engage it with the anti-rotation peg. Click. Secure both connectors to the seat pan. That one's in place. So we just do all those same steps with the new pretensioner onto the gray seat. We now have two seats ready to go into two trucks. Let's finish up this little part of the swap. Getting a little dark, I know. But we'll do connector and connector. Tighten all the bolts front and back. And finally, we'll finish up with the trim piece that covers this side bracket. Okay, both trucks are back together. You can see Old Blue is starting to look more tan on the inside. Swapped out that sun-damaged center console plus the that worn and loose <laughs> seat back. And yeah, I'm still gonna snag the dash out of here, the A-pillar trim, the headliner, the B-pillar trim, the door panels, all the gray is coming out of Old Blue and it's gonna get put in big red. But we have the seat and the floor swap done. Had just enough time tonight, you can see Sun is getting low in the sky, but it's not dark yet. Finished up by putting my good rubber Ford floor mats in big red. But one final thing we need to do is prove out the airbag system. So we'll get all positioned here. We will watch that light down in the corner. It should stay on for a few seconds and then go out. Yep, and we're good. So that means all the airbag faults are gone, and yep, I spent 100,000 miles running in that seat. Feels like home, right? So that's the first part of the interior swap between the blue truck and the red truck. As I get time, I'll continue on. I think next is going to be dash panel, and we'll probably uh, creep up the A pillars, do the headliner, do the B pillars as well, get all that stuff done. And I think after that will be door panels. I may swap like lock actuators, power window motors. I don't know yet. And there's a few exterior things and all my snowplow stuff still has to be swapped over to the red truck. So plenty more to come. Uh, stay tuned, everybody, if you like this type of thing. I don't usually do too much automotive stuff on here, although I work at the Ford dealer. I just don't like fixing things when I get home. So this is a rare exception. Thanks for watching, everybody.